Hey everyone, how's it going here at Red Castle Hotel? Incredible. Um, I just had breakfast there, about four sausages, four rashers, and uh, some other stuff. <laughs> uh, really nice though. I just got some drone footage there, here in the amazing view. So today I'm looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to bringing you along with me. So uh, stay tuned. <music> Good afternoon, my name is Finn Vola Lyons and I'm the front office manager here at the Red Castle Golf and Spa Hotel. We're very lucky in this area that we have loads of different attractions available and that would appeal to both adults and children. We're about a 25 minute drive from Mallon Head, which is Ireland's most northerly point. Um, beautiful scenery, um, lots to, to see in that area. Um, we are also very close to um, attractions for kids including Ennish Adventures which is an outdoor water park just here in Moville, it's about five minutes from us. Um, and then within a half hour drive as well we have Wild Ireland and also the Wild Alpaca Way which is situated not far from Malin Head um, at the Nakamene Bends, a really beautiful scenic area as well. Well here at the Red Castle Hotel itself um, we have the Edge Restaurant. Um, it's an award winning restaurant but one of the dishes that's really really popular and we get feedback about it all the time is um, the chef's daub of beef. Um, great, great reports about that always. But also within the area of, um, and the small village of Ballyluffin, um, for anyone who enjoys seafood, um, Nancy's Barn serves um, seafood chowder, which has won um, the competition of, or the prize of being the best seafood chowder in the world. Well, I suppose in Ashon particularly, we have the Ashon 100, which is a scenic loop drive, you know, around the area. It takes approximately 100 miles to cover the area. The starting point for that would be just not far from here. And then as you drive around the coast, you come across loads of quaint little villages, beaches galore, lots of um, other things to see and do as well. Again, something that appeals to almost everyone. I feel like Donegal definitely is the coolest place on the planet. We got that award a number of years back as well. Um, particularly um, since COVID times, we find a lot of people from further down the country have, have made the journey further north and we're really surprised and loved Donegal and we've seen return visitors come ever since that as well. Um, it really is a hidden gem. Hey guys, what's the story? So here now at Wild Ireland, highly recommended by Felina at Red Castle there. Um, here we're going to actually see bears, which I never would have thought I would see here in Ireland and uh, looking forward to getting into it. Hi, I'm Noreen. I'm just after coming out after spending maybe two hours here at Wild Ireland. Um, it's a fantastic uh, amenity and fabulous to showcase the wonderful animals we have here in Ireland. Uh, the bears are really cool. We got to see them being fed their lunch and it was interesting to realise that they eat six kgs of food, mainly meat and fish daily um, and this is for spring, summer and autumn but then they bring cut back the food in winter time um, so they lose some weight because they, they put on some quite some weight in the autumn to get ready for winter so yeah really fantastic experience and I would encourage everyone to come along. Welcome to Wild Ireland my name is Killian McLaughlin and I'm going to take you on a tour through this beautiful piece of Celtic rainforest here on the Inishone Peninsula which most of Ireland once looked like this unfortunately it's all been cut down and when the forest was cut down, a lot of our native animals like bears, wolves and lynx went extinct with it. And I brought them back here to Wild Ireland, so come on ahead and I'll show you around. So this is a temperate rainforest, and as I said, most of Ireland was once like this. In fact, it was 98% covered in forests just like this. A lot of people have heard of the tropical rainforests in South America um, and the tropics. A lot of people aren't so familiar with the temperate rainforest, and this is exactly what we're walking through now. This is one of the rarest habitats in the world now, uh, globally threatened habitat. The biggest temperate rainforest in the world is in, on the west coast of Canada, up into Alaska. 
and Ireland is, is or was temperate rainforest. Unfortunately, the forest is gone. We still have the rain, but uh, the rain in the context of a rainforest really starts to make sense. And as you look around the forest, you'll see characteristics of a rainforest that occur in both the tropics and the temperate rainforest. And one well, of the main indicators, apart from a lot of rain, is uh, when you see plants growing on other plants, and that's the mosses, the lichens, the ferns. Although lichens aren't plants, albeit, but you'll see the ferns and the mosses growing on um, growing on the trees here. And that only happens in a rainforest. So we try and tell the whole story of of ancient agriculture and how it's been lost, and modern farming methods just don't um, work alongside nature. Um, in the old days, the farmers relied on barn owls to take care of the rodent problem. A pair of barn owls can eat up to 5,000 mice a year. Uh, I'll take you into the nocturnal house because this is quite cool in here. So this is our uh, beehive and you can actually look inside and get a unique perspective on what goes on inside a beehive. Uh, bees can't see the colour red, that's why we have red lights shining on them so that we can see them but they don't, they don't pick up this colour so they're living in the dark. They have a little access hole that they go outside and they go and gather their nectar and bring it back here to the beehive and they make honey in here and members of the public can come and have a look at the bees making their honey. Busy bees at work which is pretty cool. Now, um, we'll go this way. So this is our walk through area. And the animals are actually free range in here, as you can see, we've got some wallabies, free range and some free range in sheep. So a lot of people don't realize that we've actually got wallabies living in Ireland in the wild. Since um, the 1950s, we've had a population of wallabies living on Lambay Island, just off the coast of Dublin. They're not native to Ireland, but the climate actually suits them quite well because they come from Tasmania. It's like our own little Tasmania off the coast of Dublin. Just gonna grab some brows here for the deer. the fawn. He's only a week old. Hello you. We have our own series on Netflix now called Return of the Wild, The Bear Man of Bunkrana. That's a, a nickname I've been given um, and it focuses on how I set this place up and sort of the journey that I had to go through and the battles of paperwork and battling with the bank and looking for permission from all the different government agencies and everything else. So yeah, it's, it's been really popular. It, it was trending on Netflix twice now, which is really good. So um, yeah, it's worth a watch. Hi, I'm Orla, Orla Farrell of the Easy Treesy Project with the charity Crown Trees for Ireland. So a bit like Wild Ireland where we're standing here um, and uh, their aim of reintroducing uh, some of our uh, old friends. We're uh, reintroducing old friends, the trees around the country. And today we were in Cregan in Derry where uh, we were very delighted to have been able to contribute 1,300 trees to the new uh, GAA club, which opened there on, uh, uh, with the collaboration of the local community. So uh, I'm a registered teacher and uh, our um, aim is to plant a million trees as part of the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration. Uh, the global aim is to plant a trillion trees worldwide to bring down the temperature of the planet by one degree centigrade. This is our bear habitat. Most people don't realise that bears are actually native to Ireland as well. Really hard to tell when they went extinct here. Uh, we can only go on the fossils that have been found and probably the best place to see bear fossils is actually the Alwee Caves. So these are both rescue bears. They were rescued in Lithuania where they were kept in horrendous conditions. You know, they lived on a, a concrete floor with iron bars. And when they came here first, like we had to teach them how to become bears again. So they didn't know how to forage. They didn't know how to climb. They didn't even know how to walk on grass. When we let them out for the first time, they put their paws in the grass and they didn't know what it was. So as I said, the Irish people respected and revered the wolf. They called them Maktir, son of the land or son of the country. And that was almost like a term of royalty, land in Ireland being king and the, the, the wolf being the son of the land. Or In um, 1653, Oliver Cromwell put a bounty on their heads in Ireland. Uh, six pound on a female, five pound on a male, and then a few, a few shillings for a cub. And unfortunately, the wolf went extinct very quickly after that. And, and the, you know, their absence is only now being felt in Ireland. We're experiencing an explosion in the population of deer. 
we're having deforestation caused by deer overgrazing and human culling of deer cannot replicate the effect that wolves have on the ecosystem and how they naturally control deer. So, you know, there is a, a realization now that without top predators in the ecosystem, the ecosystem is really doomed. And if the ecosystem is doomed, we're doomed as well because we rely on it for so much. It's a big part of our message here at Wild Ireland to preserve what we have still got and maybe try and rewild and restore the ecosystem to the way it was meant to be. You know, it was like this for millions of years before humans came along. And understand that without nature, we don't exist. We are a part of nature. It's not us versus nature. You can't put a little fence around nature in a national park and say, oh, look, we're doing a great job. Nature has to be all around us. We have to be engulfed in it. We know that it's, it's fantastic for our physical health, for our mental health, um, and for the health of the environment and the ecosystem. The farmers rely on the ecosystem to pollinate their plants. Uh, to feed their livestock and it's about time we realize that we have to go back to the old ways of farming alongside nature and not also against nature. So here we are now back to where we started. I have to say I'm absolutely blown away by my visit here to Wild Ireland. I was talking to Killian about like how it started and he was like you know I just I got a plot of land and then I expanded and it's 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 incredible to see someone just chasing their dream like that and um, yeah, it was, it was such a cool thing. And what he's doing for wildlife, um, it's, it's so good. I'm so happy that I went here. No wonder it was highly recommended by Felina. Hey guys, how's it going? So I was almost finished the day and then on my way, my way to my last location, I saw this, another Wild Atlantic Way sign. We're joined by a little friend here as well. I just saw him. Hello. I am right beside the road, as you can probably tell. So there's a lot of noise, but um, I'm going to try and say this Irish for you guys here uh, for Manning Manor Cunningham View. This is uh, a particular bird. So Gach blin the Corin on an Gavrog Artok Astjor. Fihamila kilometers, Orchi Fain, Honantiv Ella, then Flanid, a want to mach riv fila eran malyarish. So that means every year an Arctic turn flies 20,000 kilometers to the other end of the planet and back. Hey guys, how's it going? So I'm just here now at the final location, which I'm not going to tell you right now, I'll leave that until tomorrow, but it's as if it's something from a fairy tale. Is it even a hotel? I'll leave that for tomorrow. But uh, if you are enjoying the series, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel and if you're enjoying it, give a like below as well. So uh, thanks again and I'll see you all tomorrow.